In today's long-awaited and much-requested video, we're going to put analog night vision and digital night vision head-to-head -head by comparing the NVG30 against a PVS14. The NVG30 represents the pinnacle of performance of budget-friendly digital night vision setups coming in below $500, and this is a PVS14 NVT white phosphor from Steel Industries with specs listed below, which represents the mid-range of analog night vision monocular setups coming in around $2,500. So how does digital really stack up against analog, and where does it fall? short. Is the PVS14 really worth the $2,000 price difference or is an MVG30 good enough for you? Hopefully in the next 10 minutes I'll be able to put the performance of each of these devices into perspective to help you make that decision. For full transparency I do sell the MVG30 on my website Goodnight Gear but a lot of subscribers have been asking about the performance comparison between these devices so as always I will give you guys my honest and unbiased feedback. There will be a link down in the description below along with coupon codes which you can use to save 10% if you decide you do want to pick up the MVG30. If you're watching this, you're probably aware that any kind of IR signature can be seen from really far away by anybody else using night vision, and it's a dead giveaway of your location, and so for that reason, the comparison footage for this video will not include any IR lighting. Most people selling digital night vision on the internet, comparing it to analog night vision, have conveniently omitted this fact, because in the presence of supplemental IR lighting, there is very minimal performance difference between analog and digital night vision, making digital night vision look more favorable. If you're not concerned about running IR lighting, I invite you to check out my NVC30 review after you watch this video and I'll leave a link down below so you can see for yourself how well that device performs and in case you're wondering digital night vision devices like the NVG30 can pick up various aiming devices like IR illuminators and lasers. Alright so let's jump into some testing. I put together this little rig to help bring you guys this footage and if it looks badass go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. On the top left hand of the screen we'll be running the PVS14 which is currently being recorded through my Google Pixel 7. On the right we've got the NVG30 on its white phosphor viewing mode with IR turned off and this footage is from the device's built-in recorder and at the bottom in the middle we've got an Insta 361R action camera to give you somewhat of an idea of what these conditions would look like to the naked eye. At the trailhead there is a very small amount of ambient lighting illuminating the up close trees but as we wander down the trail the moon will be lighting the way and at the moment we've got a waning crescent moon with 12% illumination and it's completely covered by clouds so these are relatively difficult outdoor conditions but at first glance both both of these devices do seem to be handling these conditions pretty well. Let's begin our discussion with the field of view. While both of these devices claim a 40 degree field of view, the image is definitely a little bit more zoomed in and constricted on the MVG30 due to its 1920 by 1080 rectangular display shape. The PVS14 provides enhanced peripheral vision with a circular view, allowing you to see much more, especially vertically, which does make navigating across difficult terrain and avoiding obstacles somewhat easier. Horizontally, the fields of view are quite comparable and both should be suitable for scanning the horizon. One advantage to the MVG30 and most digital night vision setups is built in digital zoom, which makes it easier for you to see further. You do lose quite a bit of resolution quickly and the image gets tougher and tougher to stabilize, but it is nice to have this capability as it can help a lot with identification. And since this device is also safe to use during the day, you can also use it for daytime observation, so it is pretty nice to have this added utility. With the PVS14, you need to get an external lens to be able to magnify and see further, and most people don't even bother with this as the transition would not be nearly as seamless and you definitely would not be able to use a PVS14 in daylight. Latency or lag is another point of concern with all digital night vision devices and it's not a concern with analog because everything you see is in real time. I've tested out a bunch of different digital night vision devices many of which have a few tenths of a second of lag and in my experience the MVG30 has the least amount of lag compared to any of these devices and you do definitely notice an improvement in this category over the MVG10 and in my opinion the lag on the MVG30 is so minimal that it really doesn't take away anything from the user experience. The NVG30 has both 30 frames per second and 40 frames per second viewing modes and very minimal lag is present in either setting. Let's discuss some of the differences in picture that we're seeing between these two devices. In the presence of moonlight, the brightness of the NVG30 is sufficient enough to clearly observe your surroundings. The colors are really nice and the details are fantastic and overall it is doing an excellent job. There is a bit more color in the NVG30's white phosphor mode and you get various blue, green, and other light colored hues so it's not the same as the monochromatic viewing experience as the PVS14 and there are multiple color palettes to choose from but there's more info on those in another video. There's no question that the PVS14 is doing a better job in lower light areas and you can see a lot more contrast and as a result you'll be able to see more in the darker areas with no IR compared to a digital unit. All else being equal I think it's safe to say that under these conditions the performance between these devices is pretty comparable with some aspects of performance slightly favoring the PVS14 while others favoring the MVG30. This balance 
balance will start to change as we wander deeper down the trail towards the creek and at the moment very little moonlight is able to penetrate through the thick trees and the dense leaves of the canopy and it's very difficult to see with the naked eye and I'm having a tough time not stumbling over the rocks on the ground and the uneven terrain. As we go further into this dense area the PVS 14 is shining and the MVG 30 is definitely having a much tougher time keeping up. We can pretty much see just as well as we could in the open terrain under moonlight with the PVS 14 and you can't see really well even in the dark areas which really goes to show you just how special analog night vision is and highlights its main selling point and why you might choose it over a digital night vision device. With the NVG30 a ton of detail is lost and we are inconsistently able to make out vague dark shapes with flashes of light but it's very tough to see what's going on in this environment. The performance is still better than what you'd see with the naked eye but in situations like this you would definitely need supplemental IR lighting with any digital night vision device. As far as digital goes the NVG30 is the best of the devices that I've tested at amplifying low light levels so this is better than the type of performance you'd expect to get from the NVG10 and in pitch dark environments like inside of buildings where no light is present to amplify you will need to rely on supplemental IR lighting for both the PVS14 and the MVG30. Urban environments with ambient lighting presents another interesting point of comparison between these two devices. Similar to what we saw in the presence of sufficient moonlight the performance of these devices are much more similar and when looking in the general direction of light sources like street lamps vehicles and buildings the NVG30 seems to do as good if not a better job at cutting through the noise. In this footage some of my gain adjustments were off on the PVS14 but in general the PVS14 does have a tougher job of performing as well in the presence of external light sources so if you plan on using your night vision device around your home in your backyard or in the city this is something to keep in mind. To summarize the PVS14 is definitely a superior unit when it comes to ultra low light performance and it does offer a much wider circular view which dramatically increases your peripheral vision. There are some other advantages including a more durable mil spec build quality and being able to run for 50 hours on a single AA battery which is incredible with the unit that I'm testing with. The MVG30 can keep up pretty well in the presence of sufficient moonlight or ambient light without having to rely on IR lighting, putting it leaps and bounds ahead of many of its competitors. Being able to digitally zoom, having multiple color palettes, ease of recording, and to be able to use a monocular during the day are also nice benefits that the NVG30 offers. There's no doubt that the PVS14 is a better unit if you can afford it, but depending on your use cases and the environments you plan to use night vision in, the MVG30 might provide all the performance that you need, and having one of these would definitely be better than having no night vision at all. For combat purposes, you'd obviously rather have a PVS14 than an MVG30, particularly in CQB situations. However, in outdoor settings, in mid-ranges, with active laser aiming options, the performance of digital is definitely intriguing. If all you had is an MVG30 and the people you're up against had no night vision, the odds would definitely swing in your favor, particularly outdoors. And I've had some reports from my subscribers of Chinese PLA soldiers being issued MVG10s and other similar units in the field, so there really is no question about their viability and usefulness in these types of situations. If you don't ever see yourself throwing down on a PVS14, the MVG30 is a great alternative. Similarly, if you end up getting both an MVG30 and a PVS14, you'll have a backup in case your PVS14 goes down, and you can always grab another helmet and hand the MVG30 off to somebody else to give them night vision capabilities. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and you can leave a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on how these devices compare. You can support my work with the links down in the description below, and I also put out a bunch of head-to-head -head MVG30 vs PVS14 videos in a bunch of different environments on the Goodnight Gear YouTube channel in the short section, so if you want to see some of those comparisons, you can check out that playlist down below.